Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Foxy Boxes Map Making with Sparks. And would you look at this? This is a um a fox model made by Rotten Nugget for the series. It's pretty awesome. I really like it. Beautifully textured, nicely modeled, um, and hopefully useful whoop, for the Whoa, what is with the lighting down here? That's really dark. Uh, hopefully useful for, for the series. So for like um the for the the main lobby um he's also created individual each limb as a separate model and head and tail so i should be able to stick them all on different armor stands and rotate the armor stands to make him sort of slightly animated kind of cool this is renard um do not place renard on renard it looks weird uh, <laughs> um they kind of ride on each other's shoulders um skewering each other's necks but it's kind of sweet um it's weird. I can put this down like this and I can see through the floor. That seems like a bit of an x-ray glitch to me, really. Um, and I've got my, uh, this is this is my baby, baby fox fetus, which I designed. Um, so it's it's pretty sweet, it's pretty sweet. Um, hopefully we'll be able to use that soon. I just wanted to say thank you to Rotten Nugget for doing that. Um, what else, what else, what else? Um, somebody, um, oh, I forgot who it was. Somebody sent me a new crystal model. Let me quickly go check who that was. Okay, they're from a guy called Little Man Nine Mewtwo, um, and yeah, they're pretty cool. I like the I like the green one. It's pretty sweet. I'm not too keen on the broken one. Firstly, I think it's too dark uh, and like I don't know, not shattered enough. And secondly, the pieces are just like floating in midair um, instead of like lying on the floor. Um, but they do the same job. Uh, now, last episode we. Uh, had a great time um well i had a good time uh we finally got the whole checkpointing uh box breaking mechanic finished and working um and we've got the whole checkpoint thing set up now i realized after i made that video that there's a little bit of a flaw with the design in that if a chest armor stand the crate armor stand is is broken and then the checkpoint is powered uh or the checkpoint is activated if the armor stand is not loaded it won't realize that it its state has been changed so we technically unless we can find a way around that have to make sure that the entire level is loaded at all times now i don't know whether that just means that we're gonna to have to constrain our level down to a certain size and um force people to to have a minimum render distance of a certain amount to make sure the entire level is loaded when this happens or um, whether we could look into chunk loaders of some kind. I've heard that a, ch a line of chain commands like this can load the chunks that they run through. So you can power something at this end, and if you've got a really long line of these, they will load all the chunks. I don't know how to unload those chunks, though, uh, because I don't... Hang on. Oh, I had a had a bit of peanuts stuck in my throat there um, from, from the Snickers bar I just ate. Uh, sorry about that, but... Um, what was I saying? Oh yes, I, I don't want all of the levels loaded all the time, and I think chunk loaders kind of leave the chunks loaded until the player enters and leaves them, or something like that, and I don't want all of the levels constantly loaded because that's going to cause more lag. Speaking of levels, let's go take a look at this, which is a level that I have put together. It's like a level layout, um, which Twinkles is currently or about to decorate for me, so... Um, she's going to make it look all pretty and forest themed. So um, I think it's at this time, I think it's at the time where I, because a lot of people have asked whether they can make levels for Foxy Boxes. I'm now at the point where I'd be happy to accept level submissions, but more level layouts than like finished levels, because while I kind of have ideas of the limitations of, of the levels and how they need to be laid out, i.e. all loaded at once, um, I'm not sure what texture pack I'm using yet, and I don't want people to spend all this time building things and then a texture pack I decide to use uses one of the blocks and then it, their wet level just looks weird and then it's kind of slightly wasted. So, yeah. So, but if you want to submit a level, let me just run through this and I'll talk about some of the, uh, some of the things I've got here. So, I've marked the path out with coarse dirt. This doesn't mean it's going to be made of coarse dirt. I've used magenta to indicate a barrier, if it's like that, or um, an actual obstacle if you can't jump over it. So that suggests that players cannot get past that point. So I've got sort of, I've got holes to parkour over, things like that. Um, I have 
uh, sort of quite a few twists and turns to make things interesting. I've tried to avoid going up and down too much because I don't like the fact the player has to constantly jump to get up slopes like that. Um, so, oh, let me just go quickly turn this on. Uh, something else that I have with this is I have it so that um, the level should take between... If I just skipped a section, I think I was over here. The level should take between one and a half to th three minutes to run all the way through non-stop, like speed run. Oops, I just failed that jump there. So I've got a little bit of double backing, looping, that kind of thing. Uh, I haven't put any chests or crates in here. This is a little experiment I was doing uh, with some... Um, with some sink sand, which as you can see doesn't load too well, but it gives me slowness if I step into it. Um, kind of weird. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to use that or not. Uh, so yeah, the, the level should take one and a half to to um, three minutes to run through. Um, and th th that level playtime will be extended by not, but by, by, you know, breaking boxes and double backing and having to solve little parkour puzzles made out of crates and things like that. So um, my my plan for this level is sort of a foresty level. These are supposed to be like giant trees. So this is the tree trunk and these are branches. But I've kind of left it up to Twinkles to design, really. And I kind of see want to see what she comes up with. Um, so, yeah, if you want to design level layouts, try and keep them within a square size of a um, render distance of 10 chunks or so, and then this is the end of the level. Um, and try not to make players have to, like, go up and down too much, like like this bit here. There's a lot of jumping involved, which is it's a little annoying, to be honest. Um, I've been considering teleporting people up one block high thing so they can just walk up it but it's a little jarring it's a little jerky I'm not too keen on it so I'm not really sure what I'm doing on that front um, there's things like if this was a crate I might do things like this where you can kind of bounce off the crate and it breaks little things like that um, but I haven't worked out all the types of crate yet so um, you can maybe suggest some crate locations you can see over here I've put some pistons um, which kind of I've got a little bit of redstone which kind of launches me up if I jump off them just gives me a bit of jump boost so I've, I've put a little bit of crate mechanics in here already but yeah I mean if you want to send me a level layout like this then um, go ahead uh, I'd like to see them ideally for this game I would like Ideally, I'd like 25 levels, but I think that may be a little unrealistic. Um, so I'm aiming more for, like, I would like to have maybe 15, um, something like that. I think that will give a fairly nice play experience. So let's head back over to the Redstone world. Oh, before I do that, um, I just wanted to, uh, wanted to add, I actually did a survey. Those of you who follow me on Twitter, which you totally should at Accidental Games... Um, because I post a lot of um, questions about uh, Foxy Boxes and Game Mode 4 and a lot of um, like screenshots of development and stuff like that before before it actually goes out on YouTube. Um, I posted a survey uh, there and on Reddit asking people some questions about render distance. Um, and it seems the average render distance that players have is about 17 no, it wasn't 17. Hang on, let me look it up. The average render distance for players who filled out the survey, uh, which was about 500 people, is 14. Uh, I play at 16, um, and 10 is the standard default for servers. A lot of people, one of the questions I asked was, um, would you not want to play a game which forced you to play with a higher or lower render distance than you normally play at and most people do not want to have to change their render distance i was thinking about for foxy boxes specifying an exact render distance um for reasons i'll probably get into later when we work on some some bad guys for these levels um but so unfortunately it looks like i can't really force people into a certain game mode i can physically force them but they won't like it um, is the general consensus. So I'm going to say make sure your level is within a 10 render distance area, which is what this server here is set at. It's a fairly large area. To be honest, this is a quite a bit smaller than that. 
um, just to be safe. And I would also consider this to be quite a short level, um, considering this only takes about one hour, uh, sorry, one hour, <laughs> one, one minute 20, something like that, to run through. Um, it's quite short. One minute 20, one minute 30 is how quickly I can uh, speed my way through it. So... Yeah, I would I would say this is one uh, along the lines of a shorter level. Let's go back to the main redstone. So about the storyline for this game, I wasn't originally going to have a proper story for it, but uh, after spending a week with CDF Deman in um in Canada who is a big fan of story in games, and to be honest, so am I. I just hadn't considered uh considered doing it. I feel like I I'd like to try and do a good story for it, which includes I'd like to try and build an intro, like a, you know how a lot of games have got a short, like, cutscene style intro at the beginning of the game. Borderlands has got it, Crash Bandicoot ha 1 and 2, probably 3, I don't remember, have it. Um, Ratchet and Clank, loads of games have got, like, an intro video. I'd kind of like to try and do that for this game. An optional, skippable intro, which begins the story and sets the scene. Um... And that's going to be very difficult um, for two reasons. Um, firstly, I am not a professional filmographer. <laughs> I, you know, I dabble, but I haven't really, I've not really uh, directed something before. And the main, the main reason is that um, something that makes very engaging story is body language and facial expression. Two things that are very, very hard to do in Minecraft because everything's very low resolution um, and things like that. So, I mean, like, look at this this fox face. There isn't that much you can really do. You can change the eye pixels a little bit to show emotion, but, like, if I wanted to get a real emotional feeling from a cutscene uh, or, or from the general storyline for this game, I would have to really um work around this problem that it's very difficult to do like large action scenes any sort of movement of the body um to to indicate an ex an emotion is very difficult to do in minecraft you can do a few things you can you know you can move models around with armor stands and things like that but that's going to be a real challenge and i'm still in the process of writing uh, the, the story exactly how I want it. But the general gist is that uh, there are two foxes. Uh, they're called Raposa and Ramon. No, sorry, Raposa and Renard. I don't know why Ramon. Uh, Renard is the non-playable fox who you see over there by the fetus, um, who kind of accompanies um, Raposa, who is the character that you play as, um, in, uh, in, in her escape. They find themselves on a, on a spaceship, um, I haven't quite finished writing how that happens, but we, I've got a couple of ideas in mind. Um, and the whole the whole um, storyline for Foxy Boxes is that Raposa is trying to find somewhere to call her home. Um, so you may not have noticed I said escaped. They were originally science ex experiments kept um, kept from freedom and uh, the the, the uh, property of a pharmaceutical company. And they've escaped. And Raposa basically just wants to find a planet that she can call her own and make her home. So she's exploring all these planets, all these different levels, um, by uh, by going through them and trying to work out whether it's somewhere she wants to live and whether it can support life, like fox life. I don't know what the um, what the term is for fox. Like you've got bovine for cows and equine for horses and avian for birds and. It, uh, I don't know, things like that. I don't know what it is for foxes. Um, K are they canines? They might be canines. They probably are canines. Can they su a planet that can support canine life? There we go. Um, so that's the whole this whole storyline. Um, Renard remains on the ship, um, on the spaceship that they are traveling around in, and he's gonna have he's gonna have different different reasons for being on that ship and different ideas for the future which will hopefully create conflict uh, i don't really want to explain the storyline or especially not the end of the storyline in this series because i kind of want to keep it as a as a surprise and a mystery and a, and a bit of a shock um for for everybody um so yes i do actually have two voice actors in mind as well um who 
have both expressed interest in potentially doing some voicing for me. So that's kind of just so you know where I am on the on the storyline front. Um, it's looking pretty good. This has been quite a talky episode. I apologize. Let's make some collapsing platforms. Ha! Ah, how's that for a little um, platform? So yeah, I I quickly modelled a a little platform. As you can see, it doesn't have hitbox because it is it's just an item worn on the head of an armor stand. It's an end stone block. I need to start organising these models. I've got random models all over the place in here, um, and I have a feeling I'm going to regret some of the blocks I've assigned them to. So I should probably think about that. Try and work out which blocks I'm never going to use and start assigning to those instead. Oh god, I've just realised there's part of that level over there's got endstone and it's gonna all of the endstone blocks are gonna look like this now but um so a falling platform my idea is that there could be some areas where there is a platform floating over the void and you can jump on it and it will be triggered and after a certain number amount of time maybe a second or so it will fall into the into the void um and then after some time it'll reset itself and float back up to the top um which it could be balanced on a on a crumbling pillar or just floating i don't know um the it could be kind of interesting kind of cool uh it doesn't have to look quite so man-made either it could be just like a a stone platform instead of something that looks more fashioned like this um so we can use shulkers um summon shulker no 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 ai one b um but there's something interesting um I'm in the latest snapshot right now, and you can see that um, entities have have this ability to push players around at the moment. And unfortunately, apparently, no, it's not happening right now. Apparently, players bounce up and down when they're on these now. Um, if they are on an armor stand, let's try some resummoning that on an armor stand. However, you can fix this by putting yourself on the same team as the shulker. So we should be able to solve this problem. So we've got our a shulker on an arm stand here. Does that shulker look bigger than normal to you? It is. I think. Okay, no, I was I was imagining it. I thought that the shulkers were being made, like, in, uh, the size of them was being in, increased by the, um, by the thing. Like some blocks look bigger on the head. Um, or smaller actually, um, but apparently not. So apparently I'll bounce when I'm on this. That's not happening. Maybe I misheard. Yeah, I'm fine on that. Um, or maybe they fixed that already. Um, so we don't have to worry about that in that case. But I'm thinking about putting the, the armor stand with this on its head and the shulker, which is, will be invisible, next to each other as one of these platforms. And I'll have a little redstone which detects when the player lands on it and um, causes it to fall. So, unfortunately, shulkers, when invisible, still show their inner um, body, which is incredibly annoying. Like, I, I know we can use a texture pack to get rid of it, and I think I will you, uh, edit my texture pack to get rid of that right now. But it's just, why? Why would they do that? That's just, like, it wasn't like that before. It was like that at first, then they fixed it, and then they changed it to this. And I just, I don't understand, Mojang. Please, please fix that before full release of 1.9. I would appreciate it because it just doesn't make any sense. That's like, that's like have, making the invisibility effect the strip effect and it just like takes the clothes off things. It's just, what? What is going on? Also, invisible entities push you, but I guess that's a good thing. Okay, there we go. So uh, apparently entities do not support um, alpha transparency in their textures but you can see that it's now completely invisible i've left the outer shell with a texture of some sort so that if we need to work with them we can see where they are um but i have removed the texture for the skull itself uh so even when it's visible like right now if we go inside you can't see it so that's all good um we can do the same thing actually with um with other entities that we're summoning if we want to make sure that they're always invisible we can just remove their texture i've never textured a mob before so that was that was kind of interesting it's called an ender golem is the actual name in the resource file which is kind of weird no renard Ooh, on a side note before i forget the uh, little status effect thing on the side here um i've heard from the grapevine 
that uh, Dinabone is planning to allow that to be removed, um, like using a tag in future. So I don't need to worry about removing the texture so that it's not showing up, up, up there all the time. So that's good. Okay, so we've got our platform here. Uh, I can step on it and it's got a shulker inside it, uh, which is currently being set to invisible by a repeating command block over here. I really need to tidy this redstone up. Um, and you kind of bounce off the edge of the platform if you, you can't, like, you can't go under it slightly, which is a bit weird. I also wanted the platform to be bigger than it is. I was expecting it to be quite a bit larger in scale. I must have miscalculated something. It's supposed to be, like, twice that size. And I'm wondering whether it scaled it down because it's being worn on an armor stand's head. Like, if I get some end stone a second, I swear this should be bigger. Um, there it is. Yeah, look at that. So it's it's scaling it down when it puts it on the head of the, uh, the armor stand, which is kind of... Okay, I guess it means we need to use less shulkers, uh, but if we wanted larger platforms, I think we could do that. I think there's some sort of scale tag for armor slots. I don't really understand that yet. Uh, anyway, so we've got um, we've got these armor stands uh, or these these entities. I've got the summon commands here for them. They're both called platform. Both the shulker and both the armor stands are called platform, and we have a new objective uh, called platform fall. Uh, so we should be able to set something up over here so that if a player become if a player goes onto the platform We'll detect it and start a countdown to make it fall and then another countdown to make it rise So let's see first of all we need to detect the player I suppose so uh, execute at e Name equals platform Type Equals shulker I guess we could go with the shulker since there's only one of them instead of the two um, the two armor stands uh, so we'll execute on the shulker uh, to um, detect that there is a player on the platform so let's um, scoreboard players set at e name called shulker um, Platform fall uh, one. So we'll set it to zero if it's passive, and then one will start the countdown for the fall. So we'll set it to one, uh, although we do actually need to execute off the player there. So um, execute at E, uh, execute at A. Um, that scoreboard player set at e r equals one like that scoreboard objective set display sidebar platform fall so if we land on this the shulker should get a score of one there we go that's good um i think technically you will be able to give it a score from the side as well Okay, so if we just brush up against the edge, it will also get a score. But to be honest, if you brush up against the edge, you fall into your death. So at least for now, for the concept thing, I'm going to do that. We can probably use DX, DY, DZ to check this space above the platform more carefully. So if somebody triggers it, it's going to start adding one to its score. So scoreboard players add at E type equals shulker. Name, uh, score, platform, fall, min equals one, platform fall, one. So it's going to keep adding one. And so when that reaches a certain score, we can tell it to fall until, and continue to add up. And when it reaches another certain score, it'll stop falling. And when it reaches another score, it'll rise back up again. And when it reaches another score, it'll just set it back to zero. So it's basically just a series of animations, but the shulker is in control of the animation. So even as the platform is falling, we can still stand on it. So we can technically make the jump instead of the platform just becoming a, 
as something that you can't jump on at all once it starts falling. I think that's going to be kind of cool. So it's adding one to its score surprisingly slowly. Um, oh, it's because when I stand on it, it sets it back to one. That's no good. So we need to um, check that it doesn't that it's got a score of one before we set it. Set e at r equals one name equals plat full type equals shulker score platform fall min uh, equals zero. If we do that, we may need to add zero to it as well. So scoreboard players add at e name equals platform type equals shulker platform fall zero. So that way they'll always have a score of zero when, or at least when they're first added. So if we stand on this now, it won't take down the score. So next we need to make it fall at a certain number. So let's just go with, uh, let's see, 20 ticks a second. We probably want it to fall after maybe one second. So let's, let's go with 25, 25 ticks. Um, so I'm just going to reset his score a second. Is that an X? It's not an X. This texture pack makes it look like an X, but it's an asterisk. I thought I mistyped. Okay, cool. So if it's got a score of 25, it needs to start teleporting itself downwards, and the armor stands around it also need to be teleported down. So, um... TP at E type equals shulker name equals platform score platform fall min equals 25 score platform fall equals and then here we want to put how far it should fall basically in ticks so let's just say um 50 score platform fall equals 50 uh, we're going to teleport it down minus 0 0.3, maybe, like that. Um, and we also want it to do that to any armor stands right next to it. So, execute at e type because stroke on name, because for the um, tp at e r equals zero, name equals platform. Actually, would it just teleport itself if I included that in the name? I think it would. I think we can skip the previous command. Um, name equals platform. Put our asterisks, uh, our tildes here. TP at r equals zero, name equals platform, down minus 0 0.3. I think I can disable this one. And it should still work. So if we stand on this now, it should wait a second, then go down. It hasn't gone down. I know what it is. The shulker can't be teleported down because it's riding an armor stand. So I actually need to only teleport the armor stands. And the shulker will go with it. So now, we should see it go, oops, well, still nothing, what? Maybe it's actually one block away from those armor stands. They're not markers, so that's definitely not the problem this time. It's probably just a little further away than zero blocks from the armor stands. There we go. Okay, it probably needs to fall a fair bit further than that, but we got it to fall, so that's good. And then we want to make it so that if it's score reaches a certain threshold then it rises back up um, the same distance and ends up back where it was now the cool thing is that it's fallen we can still stand on it I feel like I feel like that's about right like the hitbox is still all good they've moved together oh I do seem to be kind of floating on it that's no good okay so we can see the two armor stands here and when it falls 
one of them isn't being moved down. But they are both called platform, right? In which case, I guess we need a larger radius again. Yeah, that's what it was. Um, see, I can still stand on it properly now. So that means we can't have these um, platforms too close together. Otherwise, they're going to trigger each other. Although, you know, that could be kind of cool to have them, like, chain one after another. Um, I don't know if we want that or not, but it's kind of interesting. It also fell further that time, which surprised me. I think it should fall a little faster as well, maybe. Um, so let's have it fall until it reaches 60, maybe 50. It's that 50, yeah. Um, and let's change it from 25 to 20. We don't need this one. We can move this one to here and then we want it to rise back up after a certain time so 20 to 50 is a difference of 30 so if we make it rise slower we can give it a difference of 60 to bring it back to the same point so let's wait until the score is 500 and until it's 560 which is a difference of 60 teleport the platforms up 0.3 blocks it's about to reach 500 oh okay i've miss misthought this somehow why did i think i need to double it to make it rise slower right oh so i need to make this 0 0.15 there we go let's try that again i think that was a bit long underground though maybe maybe we'll lower that to uh 400 and 460 400 460 okay let's go stand on this platform Whoop. Ooh, it's kind of hard to jump off when it's falling and then it's going to reach, even 400 is way too much, maybe 200. But when it reaches 400, it should rise back up to the height it was before, which means we don't have to worry about resetting it at the end of the level, or if somebody dies, it'll just come back up by itself. So there we go, it rises back up slower, but ends up what I think is in the same spot as before. Uh, should be in the same spot as before. Let me just uh, check that. So if I summon it again... Can I place a block here? I can. I think it's not quite rising to the same height it was before, which is not good. Um, have I miscalculated something? Maybe it can't do 0.15, not 0.15 properly. 0 0.14, 0 0.145, 0 0.15. Numbers. Right, let's have a jump. Oh, and then after afterwards we need to set it back to zero as well so that it's um, properly reset as well. 70, 80. 90, 200, rise back up, and stop, and I can place a block under it. So I think it just can't quite teleport that accurately. A little bit of a jerky movement when it does that. And then finally, I guess we need to set it back to, if it's got a score of 230, we set it back to zero. Scoreboard, players set at E, score, platform, fall, min equals 231. Platform fall zero. Okay, so I think we've got kind of something. And it falls. And it'll be sort of invisible and in the dark and down in the dreary, dreary depths of the hole. And at 200, it rises back up and sets itself back to zero. So there we go. Resettable, droppable platforms. I'm just going to put another one of these next to the first one to, uh, to see whether they chain each other. Um, I'll trigger one and just see what happens. 
Okay, so we've got two of these right next to each other. They're actually Zed fighting right now. I'm going to trigger one of them, like so. And yeah, they both fall. Okay. And they both rise, probably. Yeah, there we go. So we may have to change our radius thing. can probably fix that by executing lower. Let's try that. So we'll execute at the shulker a block lower than it actually is and change this to a radius of one and the same uh, for this one radius of one one block lower Let's see if that fixes it nope still gets it okay now if they are a block apart we should see that yeah there we go perfect so i don't think i'd want them touching anyway because they zed fight but that's kind of cool um let's try setting a few of these up and having some fun <laughs> okay ready guys Whoop. parkour champion Whoop. yep <laughs> that's kind of fun i like that and then they'll all rise up in a sort of nice little wave there we go and then we can go back if we want to I can actually run between them. It's kind of interesting. Okay, one more thing, because I want to see this. All right, let's do it. Yep. Um, okay, I think they messed each other up a bit there. I think because uh, they were all chaining at different times, we're probably going to get them rising to random heights now. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we've got to avoid that. <laughs> we can't have, um, can't have them too close together. Although it makes for some pretty cr crazy parkour. I think without it killing us, these rising, these are actually going down into the void. Do they lift us up? No, they, they leave us hanging. They leave us hanging. <laughs> ah, okay, that's kind of interesting anyway. So, pretty happy with that. We can install those in some places on the map, which will be cool and fun. Uh, I'm going to put the invisibility back on uh, this guy. There we go. So they're proper little floating platforms. We can have, we can probably have some sort of pillar underneath them as well. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty pretty cool actually. I like that. Um, and we can have sort of different platforms fall at different times, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, pretty sweet. So a bit of a talky episode today. Uh, I'm actually going to Switzerland tomorrow morning this is this is i've just had time and i haven't had much time to do much youtube stuff recently i've got real life and um work stuff um as you know i've recently been working a little bit on wonder quest i've also got mind gauge stuff um this and that i've been asked to um to provide some consultancy work as well so well, that's really weird invisible shulker right there um so yeah i've got to you know, prioritize. I can't do everything, but uh, I do want to keep working on this, of course. So hopefully by next episode, we will have some um, some levels to look at and maybe Twinkles will have um, decorated hers as well. Um, and I'll talk a bit more about sort of the level design ideas for like the visuals of the levels. So I think that'll be fun. Um, I'm going to be gone for 10 days. Um, so it's going to be a little while before the next episode, I'm sorry. But um, I'm glad people enjoy the series a lot. So I will see you next time I fail.